Yasoda took up a rope to bind you when you committed an offense. And your perturbed eyes overflooded with tears, which, which washed the mascara from your eyes. And you were afraid, though fear personified is afraid of you. This sight is bewildering to me. Purport by its divine grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Srila Prabhupada. Here is another explanation of the bewilderment created by the pastimes of the Supreme Lord. The Supreme Lord is the supreme in all circumstances, as already explained. Here is a specific example of the Lord's being the supreme and at the same time a plaything in the presence of his pure devotee. The Lord's pure devotee renders service unto the Lord out of unalloyed love only. And while discharging such devotional service, the pure devotee forgets the position of the Supreme Lord. The Supreme Lord also accepts the loving service of his devotees more relishably when the service is rendered spontaneously out of pure affection, without anything of reverential admiration. Generally, the Lord is worshiped by the devotees in a reverential attitude, but the Lord is meticulously pleased when the devotee, out of pure affection and love, considers the Lord to be less important than himself. The Lord's pastimes in the original abode of Goloka Vrindavana are exchanged in that spirit. The friends of Krishna consider him one of them. They do not consider him to be of reverential importance. The parents of the Lord, who are all pure devotees, consider him a child only. The Lord accepts the chastisements of the parents more cheerfully than the prayers of the Vedic hymns. Similarly, he accepts the reproaches of his fiancés more palatably than the Vedic hymns. When Lord Krishna was present in this material world to manifest his eternal pastimes of the transcendental realm of Goloka, Vrindavana, as an attraction for the people in general, he displayed a unique picture of subordination before his foster mother, Yasoda. The Lord, in his naturally childish, playful activities, used to spoil the stock butter of Mother Yasoda by breaking the pots and distributing the contents to his friends and playmates, including the celebrated monkeys of Vrindavana, who took advantage of the Lord's munificence. Mother Yasoda saw this, and out of her pure love, she wanted to make a show of punishment for her transcendental child. She took a rope and threatened the Lord that he, she would tie him up as is generally done in the ordinary household. Seeing the rope in the hands of Mother Soda, the Lord bowed down his head and began to weep just like a child. And tears rolled down his eyes, washing off the black ointment smeared about his beautiful eyes. This picture of the Lord is adored by Kunti Devi because she is conscious of the Lord's supreme position. He is feared often by fear personified, yet he is afraid of his mother who wanted to punish him just in an ordinary manner. Kunti was conscious of the exalted position of Krishna, whereas Yasoda was not. Therefore, Yasoda's position was more exalted than Kunti's. Mother Yasoda got the Lord as her child, and the Lord made her forget altogether that her child was the Lord himself. If Mother Yasoda had been conscious of the exalted position of the Lord, she would certainly have hesitated to punish the Lord. But she was made to forget this situation because the Lord wanted to make a complete gesture of childishness before the affectionate Yasoda. This exchange of love between the mother and the son was performed in a natural way and Kunti, remembering the scene, was bewildered and she could do nothing but praise the transcendental filial love. Indirectly, Mother Yasoda is praised for her unique position of love, for she could control even the all-powerful Lord as her beloved child. Shimad Bhagavatam Grantaraja Ki Jai. And I'll read one thing from the Nectar Devotion also. It says, that Krishna is controlled by love. Krishna becomes obliged to the loving spirit of the devotee 
and not exactly to the service rendered. No one can serve Krishna completely. He is so complete and self-sufficient that he has no need of any service from the devotee. He is a devo it is the devotee's attitude of love and affection for Krishna that makes him obliged. A very nice example of this obligatory behavior was manifested when Sudama Vipra went to Krishna's palace. Sudama Vipra had been a class friend of Krishna and due to his property, poverty, I'm sorry, due to his poverty, he was induced by his wife to see Krishna to request some aid. When Sudama Vipra reached Krishna's palace, Krishna received him very well and both he and his wife washed the feet of Sudama Vipra, showing respect to the Brahmana. Remembering his loving affairs with Sudama in their childhood, Krishna began to shed tears while receiving him. Another instance of Krishna's obligation to his devotee is described in the 10th canto, 9th chapter, verse 18 of Srimad Bhagavatam, where Sukadev Goswami tells King Parikshit, My dear King, when Mother Yasoda was perspiring, tired of trying to bind Krishna up with rope, Krishna agreed to let, uh, allow her to bind him. Krishna as a child was disturbing his mother by his naughty activities and she wanted to bind him up. Mother Yasoda brought some rope from the house and tried to tie up the child, but she could not tie a knot due to the shortness of the rope. She tied together many ropes, but when she finished, still the rope was too short. After a while, she felt very tired and began to perspire. At that time, Krishna agreed to be bound up by his mother. In other words, no one can bind Krishna by any means other than love. He is bound only by obligation to his devotees because of their ecstatic love for him. Srila Prabhupada ki jai. Sri Damodarastakam ki jai. Gaur Premanandi Are there any questions, comments? Haribo, Harinam Sankitan. Oh, I have a question. Yes. Um, um, Priya of Ratamuni is the, the author of this, who wrote this uh, Astakam. So okay. uh, he was, I mean, he wasn't, a, how do you understand that time about Raja Prem? Because he was in the, I think it was Satya Yuga or something. Maybe it was Satya Yuga. At that time, Prasha Prem was not known to people. And uh, I, w I, will, I will assume that he was in the platform of liberation, maybe, because we're great devotees, of course. Well, he had the mercy of his guru, Narada Muni. Right? Mm. Narada Muni is aware of all these things, even if they haven't happened yet. Right. Right? So he told, he was able to instruct Valmiki Muni about. Lord Rama before it even happened, before he even appeared. Oh, that was it. Yeah. That was in Satya Yuga, Lord Rama appears in Treta Yuga. Treta. So I would, I'm not sure, but I know that Narada Muni was his guru. Is that Priya Vrata the same one who, who took He's care of the king. fish? He's uh, a king, uh, no. right? That was a king, no, that was a... Such a rat, sorry. Yeah, yeah sorry. Priyavata is a king, and Narada Muni convinced him not to uh, listen to his father and uh, to uh, become like a sannyasi or, you know, renounced. And then the father uh, complained to Brahma, and then Brahma overruled Narada Muni and told Priyavata that he should listen to his father. And Narada Muni did not object. He, re he accepted it. He said, okay, well, you get married, you have kids, you be the king, but you should internally, uh, and externally you should be a henpecked husband, internally you should be renounced, so that when the right time comes, you will not hesitate and leave. So that's an important instruction about Priyavata Muni that he received from Narada. And, and it shows that even Narada accepted to be overruled by his guru, Brahma. And, uh, but he told, gave uh, Priyarata Muni the uh, essential 
uh, instruction for all uh, grihastas, that even though they accept to get married, have children, and have to maintain family and all those things, externally they should act in, as in a normal way, but internally they should cultivate complete renunciation so that when the, their 25 years are over of marriage and the children are grown and situated, they can give up mm -hmm. uh, married life, home and hearth, and, uh, and take up 100% uh, Krishna consciousness. Yeah, I remember the one verse by the mercy of uh, Srinath Muni, his spiritual master. The one verse in Bhagavatam family said that, now to give up enough, <laughs> I had enough of material sense gratification. This is Priya Vrata Maharaj saying. He, yeah, he, said, I mean, he acted like a henpecked husband. No, no, when the and time he, came. Yeah, when the time came, he gave up he with said, no hesitation at all. He just walked away. <laughs> it's enough. Yeah, because he, was, he, was, he listened to his guru. Internally, he developed detachment. He yeah. cultivated detachment. Externally, he acted in a normal way so that there would be peace. So, I mean, I don't know if Narada Muni gave him uh, Krishna Prema or not. Or oh, definitely. He's blessed him. Okay. <laughs> Arivo. That means that even if you're married, you're not limited. He is one of he is one of the best disciples, disciples Narada Muni. Yeah. Priya Vrata. That's why he's famous. Otherwise, he couldn't rule this kind of. Uh, this is a, this is most exalted, you know, glory. So, Supreme Lord, how could he do that? Do you have that vision? The Prabhupada also was married, and he did not pre prematurely leave his wife or anything. Even though he said he didn't like his wife, he wanted to get a second wife. <laughs> his father told him <laughs> not to do it, and uh, he followed, a, you know. The, Prehasta life in the proper way, and at the same time, he was, he was preparing himself to uh, accomplish his guru's order. So it's possible to be completely renounced, but still act like a normal husband, and and do things correctly. Haribo, all glories to Sila Prabhupada ki